All right, so we're going to take some look at some notes here. Um, that paper you have in front of you, we will get to that in a little bit. Um, but first, I wanted to talk about one thing really quick. Um, the thing we're going to talk about is multiplicity. We kind of touched on it a couple of times ago, okay? But it kind of has to explain if it explains a few things, and, and let's talk about it right here. Let's start off right here. So, with that fundamental theorem of algebra. We learn that if we look at this quadratic, okay, you've got x squared. That degree of 2 tells us a few things, right? It tells us the end behavior. It's a positive function. 2 is even, so we know that it's going up to positive infinity, whether we go to positive infinity or negative infinity. If it were a negative x squared, it would go down, okay? It also tells us there's two zeros. However, if we graph it, we end up having one zero at zero zero. Why is that? Okay. Same idea with if we look at just the parent function x cubed. Degree of three tells me as I go positive to positive infinity, our end behavior is infinity. As we go to negative infinity, our end behavior is infinity. If we were to make that a negative here, it would go the opposite. It would start up here and go down. Okay. Um, but if we look at our 0, our x-intercept, we only have 1. We should have 3. Okay, that fundamental theorem of algebra says we should have 3, but we only have 1. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, it has to do with this thing called multiplicity with our 0. So let's take a look at a few more examples. So look at this function I graphed. Okay, we've got x minus 1 squared and x plus 3. Okay, so if we were to set them equal to zero and solve, okay, well I get get rid of those parentheses. X minus one squared means I've got two of them, right? And x plus three, that's like to the first power, so I have one. So I add one to both sides, I get one equals x. I get one equals x. I get negative three equals x. So that negative three is right there. That 1 is right there. And it's there how many times? Twice. Okay? Which that square keys us into that fact. Okay? So notice what happens. An even exponent over our zeros. Look how the graph responds. Okay? An odd, that 1, notice how the graph responds. Let's look at another one. Okay, now we've got two odds, right? So there's three zeros right here and one zero right here at negative three and positive one. Notice that shape. Okay, notice that shape. So now look at this one. Now we've got an even, a positive one, so it's four times, and at negative three, it's twice. Okay, look at that shape we see. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. Okay, look at this. Oh, we'll get to that one. Okay, look at the pattern here. If I give you an exponent of 2, or 4, or 6, or 8, or 10, what do you think it's going to look like? Okay, what if I give you an exponent of 1, or 3, or 5? or 7, or 9. What is it going to look like? Okay, They're going to be different, right? All these odd ones, okay, they actually go through the x axis. Okay, This is 1. Notice how quickly it goes. This is 3. Notice how kind of flattens out. If I gave you 5, it would flatten out even more. 7, would be even flatter, and 9 out of these ones would be the flattest. So when you have an exponent around your zeros when it's factored in, that's the multiplicity. Okay, And that multiplicity affects the shape of the graph as it goes across that x-intercept. The higher the multiplicity, the flatter it gets, and if it's odd, odd are going to cross. And I don't know why I wrote an E at the end of cross. 
odd are going to cross. That's the rule. Okay? So with that multiplicity, an odd multiplicity crosses. Okay, now an even multiplicity, notice the same idea. Two, kind of short right here. Four gets a little wider. If I did six, it would be a little wider. If I did eight, even wider. And ten and so on, be even wider. Okay, so with an even multiplicity, okay, an even multiplicity, it's going to bounce. It doesn't cross the x-axis, it bounces, whether it's coming on the, whoop, that one was a bad one, whether it's coming from up here or down here. Okay, those even multiplicities, those powers here that are even, okay, they're going to bounce. So make sure that you've written that down. Okay, if you need to, ask the guest teacher to pause it so you can make sure you get that information in. Okay. So, look at this one. So you would think this one's going to bounce, right? Because it's got the squared. But look where the exponent is. It's on the inside of the parentheses, not the outside. So if it were on the inside, and I set it equal to 0, we would add 1 to both sides. I'd have 1 equals x squared. Well, we can take the square root of that, and we'd get a positive or a negative 1 equals x because both plus 1 squared is 1 and negative 1 squared is 1. So notice we have two x-intercepts. Okay, that's not multiplicity. Multiplicity has to have the exponent on the outside. Now, see, look how crazy it gets. But look what we notice, okay? Let's highlight all the odd ones in blue. Okay, so this would be negative 5. This would be negative 3. This would be negative 1 for our x-intercepts. So at negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, notice what happens. We're crossing. We flatten out the further, the bigger the multiplicity. Okay, so if we were to write this, I'd say I have an x-intercept at negative 1 with a multiplicity of 1. Usually if it has a multiplicity of 1, we don't say it has a multiplicity, but if you wanted to, you could. At negative 3, I have a multiplicity of, look at the exponent, 3. It's like there's three x-intercepts in there, and because of that, it changes the shape of it. I also have an x-intercept at negative 5, and that one has a multiplicity of 5, because the exponent is 5. Okay, now let's make all the even ones green. So I have x-intercept of positive 5, positive 3, positive 1. And notice, we never cross. Even though it looks like we do here, we actually don't. And I'll show you a close-up version of that. So I have an x-intercept at 1, okay, which I don't have to say the multiple. Or I guess I do because I have a 2, don't I? And it has a multiplicity of 2. See how it comes in, touches, and jumps up. Okay, then for 3 and 5... 3 and 5, we have multiplicity of a positive 3, we had a 4 up here, so multiplicity of 4. A positive 5, we had a 6, a multiplicity of 6. Okay, and so if I zoomed in on those 3 and 5, see, it gets a little fatter, but it bounces. Okay, so that's how we would talk about it. Alright, so, if you need to write any of that down, get it written down. Just remember, okay, an odd exponent gives us, it crosses through, and then whatever the exponent is, is its multiplicity. An even is going to bounce, and then whatever it is gives it its multiplicity. Okay, and that's just to help us understand and see how, to help us understand better how to draw a graph. Okay, that gives us an idea of what to do when we have those x-intercepts. All right, so now you should have that piece of paper because now we're going to tackle it. Okay, so 3.6 seeing structure. Claire and Carmela were having a discussion about how easy it is to graph polynomial functions. Claire stated, all you need to know to sketch the graph of a polynomial function is the degree of the polynomial. The degree will tell you the end behavior 
and the number of times the graph will cross the x-axis. Carmelo mostly agreed, however, thought there was something not quite right with this statement. Okay, so is it true? Yeah, the degree does tell us the end behavior, right? Because it's, if it's even, you know, it's either going to be both up or both down. Okay, I, I suppose you may want to add, you know, if it's positive or negative, the graph helps determine as well. Okay, but I don't think that's the part they want us to focus on. So, the number of times the graph will cross the x-axis. Did we see over here there's times it doesn't cross? Yeah, when we have that different multiplicity. Okay, so how would you change that? Write that in right here. Okay, how would you change that? Oh, and just to talk about the odd, right? It's down and up. Or if it's negative, it's up and down. Okay, so how would you modify that? Change that, because it doesn't tell you how many times it will cross the x-axis. Does it tell you the x-intercepts? Yes. Could you tell if you factored it out? Yeah, so there's more you got to do than just what she's saying. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at these problems. So I want you guys to try to do these on your own first. So um, if you could have our guest teacher um, pause for a few minutes after each one. So pause, work on this. I'll go through it. You can check your work, see how well you did, make fix any mistakes, notice your mistakes, learn from them, and then we'll go from there. Okay? So pause, give us about, oh, four to five minutes. That should be plenty of time. Um, to get a pretty good handle on it. Okay? So pause it now. Alright, let me draw my axes. Hopefully you guys did a pretty good job of it. Okay. So, um, taking a look at this, um, remember roots are just x-intercepts. Okay? So, pretty easy to tell with ours first, right? We just make that f of x zero, and then each one of these we set equal to zero by themselves. So zero equals negative x, zero equals x minus two, and zero equals x minus four. You should be able to tell that we're going to add four to both sides to get four equals x. We're going to add two to both sides to get two equals x. And we're going to divide by negative one, which will still give us zero equals x. So we've got three intercepts, right? We've got zero, two, and 4. Okay? You could write them as points 0, 0, 2, 0, 4, 0, but you don't have to. So we plot them 0, 2, and 4. Okay? Now, what's our end behavior? Well, count our x's 1, 2, 3. Oh, did we do multiplicity? We didn't. Okay? That's to the power of 1, to the power of 1, to the power of 1. So they each have a multiplicity of 1. Okay, but I've got three x's, so we know it's going to be cubic, right? So degree is going to be three. And it's a negative, because it has that negative out front. So a negative odd, okay, means that for our end behavior, from this furthest right x-intercept, we're going to be going down. And from the furthest left, we're going to be going up, okay? So we kind of know that we're going like this. Now, with a multiplicity of 1, does it cross or does it bounce? Well, they all cross, right? So I know as we go, I'm going to cross through. Okay, see how I crossed through each time? And you may go down further or up further. We're not trying to get that crazy. But that's our basic shape. So our end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, we approach positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, we approach negative infinity. Okay? So, that one wasn't too bad. Alright, try number three. Take a few minutes, do that one. Hopefully you guys will do better on this one. Okay, so you should have had that paused already. And let's take a look at it. So, we need to factor that down a little more, don't we? x squared plus 4x plus 4 would factor to x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay. Well, how do we really write that? We could leave it like that and solve each one of these. So we'd have x times x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. And we'd end up with 
0 equals x, x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0, which we'd subtract 2 to both sides. So we'd end up with negative 2 equals x twice, which what does that mean? It's having to do with our multiplicity, okay? Because this really can be rewritten as x plus 2 squared. So really our graph would look like x times x plus 2 squared. Okay, so that means our multiplicity, we'd say, we have an intercept at 0 and at negative 2, and that one has a multiplicity of 2, whereas this one is just 1. Okay, so once again, an x and an x squared are going to give us a cubic, so a degree of 3. This one's even, so an even means our end behavior is going to go up as we go to the right and down as we go to the left. So they mimic same. Okay, negative, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Okay, so we graph our two x-intercepts, one at 0, one at negative 2. Okay, we also know that this one at negative 2 is going to have a multiplicity of 2, so it's not going to cross, it's going to bounce. Okay, so now our end behavior. On this left side, as we keep going left, we're going to go down, right? So I know that this one's going to curve down. But I know it's going to bounce like this. Okay? It's not going to cross. Then I know with my end behavior here, as we go right, it goes up. So this is going to go up. It's going to cross. So this has to somewhere wrap around like that. Okay, and if you want to double check any of this, um, you can definitely use Desmos or you can use our graphing calculators. If we have time at the end of this video, I'll remind us how to graph and you can double check. But I'm not looking for extreme accuracy. I'm looking for this bouncing, the x-intercepts to be right, the bouncing to be right, and the crossing to be right. I don't care how far your minimum, your relative minimum went. So there we go. Okay, take five minutes, try this one. All right, you should have done that one now. Okay, now this one's a little trickier because we're going to have to factor first, aren't we? These ones are getting a little tougher because they're not as easy to type in. Got to factor them. So if I was factoring this, I'd say I can take an x squared out of that, can I? And I'd be left with x minus 1. Set it equal to 0. So we'd have 0 equals x squared. So 0 equals x. So we've got a multiplicity of 2 at 0, right? So multiplicity of 2, it's cubic again and positive again, so our end behavior is easy to deal with because they're just the same, meaning these two are the same and these two are the same. Okay, we also have this x minus 1, so 0 equals x minus 1, add 1, but we've only got it once, so it has a multiplicity of 1, put a little m up there. Okay, so... When I graph it at 0 and at 1, okay, so and I may want to actually do this. I'm going to want to say, I'm counting by, let's say 1 goes right out here, and so that would be negative 1. I want my tick marks to be a little bit further out, so that would be 2. And that would be negative 2. Okay, then when I draw my point zero, 0, for my first x-intercept and 1 for my second, I've got a little more space to work with. Now that end behavior, so if I look at my left in x-intercept from there, as we go to the left, we're going down. So I know this one's going down. I also know that that has a multiplicity of 2, so this is going to bounce here and then go down. As I go to the right, I go up, so I know from here we're going up. It's got a multiplicity of 1, so I know it's going to cut through. And then somewhere down here, it's going to bend back over. So kind of a similar shape to that one. Okay? But by all means, type that into your graphing calculator. See how well I did. Okay? All right. Take a few minutes on this one. You should have had those few minutes. So let's look. x to the 4th minus 16. Hey, that's 
following a special rule. It's actually called, and in the homework for this, the video, I talk more about this, but it's called the difference of squares. And there's a special pattern to it that makes factoring a lot easier. Okay, so I've got x to the fourth, which is like x squared squared, minus 16, which is 4 squared. So I would just go x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4. Okay, now this is not necessarily going to give us multiplicity, is it? Well, it could because I can factor this out under those same rules, because that's like x squared plus 2 squared. So if I did that, I'd end up with x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Wait. No, that wouldn't work. That would only work for the difference, right? That would only work for this guy. For this one, I can't deal with this one, x squared plus 4. Okay, we couldn't factor that one the same way. So I'd leave it like that. Okay? So then these give me my zeros. So that would be negative 2 equals x, right? This one would be positive 2 equals x. This one, however, is going to give us some trouble. Okay, so that was my video, not the school. So we subtract 4, we get negative 4 equals x squared. Now I take the square root of that and we run into an issue right here. You can't have the square root of a negative number. Okay, So we're not going to worry about this root. Okay, These are what we call imaginary roots. So for today, we're going to talk about them later, just write down two imaginary roots, okay, and also two and negative two. So when we graph, we go to positive two and negative two. This is an even degree, and it's positive, so I know my end behavior is going to be up and up, okay, positive infinity and positive infinity, so that these are going to come up. Okay, then they're also going to, because they only have a multiplicity of 1, I know they're going through and are just going to connect somehow like that. Okay, and actually my y-intercept would be clear down to negative 16. So if we were to really draw this, it would look more like, I'll do it in blue, look more like this. Okay, so that one was a little crazy and we'll talk more about this aspect in another lesson here coming up. Let's keep trucking. So number six, you got a cubic, graph it. Take a few minutes. Pause it if you haven't yet. All right, hopefully you had a little bit of time to look at that one. So factoring this one, first thing we can do, notice they all have x, so I can factor out an x. So it'd be, and we'll set it equal to zero already. x, and we'd have x squared left over. 2x left over, and 3. Now, can we factor this one out? Yeah, we'd have x, let's see, negative 3 and negative 2, so minus 3 and x plus 1. That would work. So we're going to have three zeros, right? x equals 0, because when we set those two equal, positive 3 when we set those, kind of saving some time, negative 1 for those. So we've got the three x-intercepts, all with a multiplicity of 1. It's positive cubic, so I know as I go to the left, we're going down. As I go to the right, we're going up. So I graph these 0, negative 1, and 3. They have a multiplicity of 1, so I know that we're cutting through every single one of them. Okay? And I know that I can write them that way because I know my end behavior. On this furthest one, I know we're going down. On the furthest right one, I know we're going up. So I know I'm going to have to cut through here, come down here somehow, cut through here, come around, and cut through there. Okay? And there we go. Okay? Hopefully you guys are getting better at these ones. All right. So looking at this, explain how you are able to graph a polynomial that is not already in factored form. Okay? The easiest way is to just factor it, find the x and y intercepts, suppose that's probably not the easiest. You could also graph it, okay, with a graphing calculator of some sorts. But um, just kind of that process we did, how would you explain that? Answer that question, okay? If you know one root of a cubic function, can you find the others? Explain, okay? 
So what do you think on that? I want you guys to try to answer these. Keep these papers with you for the homework, but um, bring them back next class period because I want to take a look at what you guys come up with. Okay, and we can talk about that. Maybe have a little quiz. Not really a counting quiz, but some of these same questions to see what you guys remember. All right, so we've got about five minutes left in the video. Let me get some, just remind you guys how we graph with our graphing calculator so you can check some of your work. All right, so here's just some screenshots. So remember, when you open up a new document and you go to a graph, okay, gives you the option to type in your graph. You can't type it in in the factored form. You can't on Desmos, you can't on our graphing calculators. So if you're looking to try to graph one like this, okay, you're going to have to multiply that x through first, and then you can graph it. One like this, multiply this first, then multiply the x through to get it that way. You can still do it, you just got to do a little extra work. For these other ones, it's already in a format you can put in. Okay, so you hit enter, you get your graph, right? If you need to do another graph, you can hit a few things. Now you can try to guess at where your zeros are if you're trying to check those zeros, because end behavior is pretty easy to see. Okay, so you hit menu, and you want to go down to analyze graph. Okay, when you hit that, it gives you some options. Look, you can even check minimum, maximums, intersections, okay, other things. We want zeros, right? We want those x-intercepts. You click on that, and it's going to give you this option. You'll be able to drop your first line, and then scroll over to drop your second line. Okay, now, for every zero you have, you're going to have to do it. So I already did it for this first one. Then I had to go back to the menu, click on it again, and I could do it for this second one. And then it'll give us, after you do that, it'll give you all those zeros so you can check your graph and see how well we did. So for this graph, x cubed minus x squared, how did we do? Okay, we went down quite a bit further, didn't we? Let's see, using my 1, 2, that would actually be 1 right there, negative 1. So, looking at that, okay, now oh, see, they went a lot, we went further down than they did, but pretty close. We're just trying to get it close, okay? So there you guys go. You can use those calculators to help you out, check your answers, um, get working on that homework, and um, if you have time, you may not have much time left in class, um, just get as much done as you can. And we will see you guys next time in class.